Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Merrill Cook, Content Marketing Manager at DiffBot. And today we're going to look at 10 new market intelligence queries from DiffBot's Knowledge Graph. I'm going to throw a link up on the screen. If you don't already have a subscription or a trial, a good time to grab a free trial is during this brief intro when you can follow along with the queries we're going to work through. So jumping in, let's start with a quick overview of what the Knowledge Graph is. In short, the Knowledge Graph is a majority of the web scraped for entities, facts, and relationships between entities, and then structured into a queryable format. Our Knowledge Graph has billions of entities, and a particular note is our article index that's about 50 times the size of Google News, as well as our fantastic organization entity coverage that includes everything from detailed profiles of Fortune 100 companies through very long-tail organizations. Uh, we also have additional entity types, which include products, people, and more. So knowledge graphs are a great way to organize real-world data or data in the wild for a few reasons. Uh, first off, they have flexible schemas, and they can adapt to different fact types. They also sort of mimic how humans think about the world in terms of entities, how they're connected. Instead of searching for content about a topic and that's meant to persuade you to take action on a web page, you're searching for entities about real world things. And this makes perfect sense for use cases like market intelligence, which we'll look at today. So what facts matter for market intelligence? Uh, facts about organizations and people and new, new events and how they interact. And so our Knowledge Graph is able to leverage AI and NLP to automate the process of accumulating these facts from across the web uh, at a much more cost-effective, scalable, and even according to a number of studies, more accurate way than human fact accumulation for market intel. Um, so honestly, that was really all I wanted to cover by way of introduction. Um, and let's just jump into the knowledge graph to work with our 10 queries here. So, uh, first off, I am at app.diffbot.com forward slash, uh, search. This is our knowledge graph search visual interface that you can also interact via API or integrations like Google Sheets or Excel. There's a visual query editor, which you can uh, see on the screen. Um, you start by selecting the entity type you want returned and then essentially filtering these entities. So in this case, I started with uh, organizations and then I filtered by, you know, industry. Um, and you can see as I toggle the visual query builder, a query is being built uh, over to the right. This is diffbot query language. For more advanced queries, like most of what we'll be showing today, we'll need to just edit our queries in the text-based editor right here. Um, many queries are possible in the Visual Query Builder as well, and it is a great way to get started. It just doesn't work for every single uh, query we're going to work through today. Uh, however, our first query, we can utilize the Visual Query Builder. Uh, it's a super easy query to make, and basically we're going to look at organizations by industry. And what I want to showcase here is that we started out with sort of standard NAICS and SIX codes. Um, and those are all present, and that could be super important for syncing back up with your database or, or integrating with other sources and so forth. Um, but we actually recently employed some machine learning to get a bit more granularity. So we have all these subcategories of companies that are beyond the standard industry category. For example, um, you know, natural language processing companies is not a NAICS code. Uh, in this case, uh, all entities that would be returned for a query of natural language processing companies would also be AI companies and software companies. So you'd be able to sync back up with uh, more standard in industry categories or mine in and search with greater granularity. So to showcase sort of how precise this can be, let's check out uh, computer vision companies. And we click search and should have, yeah, about 25,000 results. So pretty impressive. Uh, worth noting that that uh, these categories are not mutually exclusive. So, you know, some of these companies, for example, Yandex, yes, they uh, 
work in computer vision, but also in many other industries as well. Um, and just to sort of mine in to, to, to get a core set of good computer vision companies, let's just say um, we want to make sure that these organizations have not been dissolved. So is dissolved, false search, and let's see what's returned. Okay, a vast majority of the 25,000 companies, and that makes sense for computer vision companies that would have a uh, that would have a footprint on the web at this point. Um, and let's let's say next you wanted to ensure that uh, you know you don't want the one person startup. So in this case, we can filter by uh, the number of employees. Let's say we want the number of employees to be uh, over 50 in this case. Uh, so we go number of employees uh, greater than 50. And this cuts us down to a much smaller number of companies. Uh, finally, maybe you want for them to be well-funded companies. So let's look at companies that have uh, an investment value of, um, I don't know, greater than $10 million. And this can be done via the visual interface as well, uh, greater than 10 million. And of note again, we are building our query this entire time. And we're down to 471 results. And now what we have here is a list of fairly successful, uh, in growth stage at least, um, computer vision companies. Uh, sort of an unrivaled list, even at 471, down from 25K, uh, most places online. Um, so I I'm partially walking you through these steps in the Visual Query Builder to give a glimpse of how you can build a query and start honing on the data you want. Uh, a technique we often see used for exploration at this point is facet, which basically provides a summary view of the values of one field in the results. So let's say we wanted to see where these locations are uh, located. And facet is something we'll need to, to add via the text-based editor. Um, but we could simply say uh, locations, city, name, and we'll get a summary view here of where these 471 orgs are located. And it looks like uh, up number one, San Francisco, New York, London, Palo Alto, some Chinese companies as well. Um, yeah, so this is just, just simply to show that uh, you can find where data coverage is before integrating into your project. You, you, you will in all likelihood want to perform some exploratory queries in this visual interface. Um, and in this case, our first query we're showcasing, just our new particularly granular industry fields. You know, there's no other list of computer vision companies online that is that long, 25K results. So I spent a little longer on that first query than we will on the following. Uh, I just wanted to give a basic overview of, sort of how you explore the data in the KG. Uh, our second query is a relatively new market intel query. Uh, this is a query that looks at person data. Uh, so we've had employment records in our knowledge graph for a long time, but we recently applied some NLP here to categorize employment to some extent. Uh, because as we all know, naming conventions for jobs just aren't standard. If you're looking at employment, employment across multiple organizations or locations, organizations of different sizes, or those that are more or less horizontal, in their hierarchy, uh, you may get all sorts of employment titles that are actually sort of related to one another. So um, here's our query here. And we are faceting again, this time by employment's categories name. And what is returned is essentially two sets of values. We're looking at two matrices here. So the first is seniority, intern or manager or C-level. And the second is job function. And this is all uh, linked data. So we could click through here to see the individuals that constitute uh, engineering, IT, and software development roles at Microsoft to see the actual person entities. Um, if you happen to know Microsoft size, you may be thinking, uh, wow, that is a lot of 
of current employees. Um, and that's that's the thing. This is not current employees. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we are going to make this uh, slightly more specific query. This is called a nested query where all um, filters inside of these curly brackets must be true. And if we wanted to be exceedingly strict here, we could say let's facet by not the category of um, the job title, rather let's facet by uh, the category of the current job title. So category's name, while the employer name is Microsoft, and while that is presently employer. And uh, this is just to show additional techniques you can layer on top. Let me try that real fast. And here we are, a more manageable amount for uh, a company of Microsoft size. Um, so that is our second query. Uh, let's jump on to three, where we're going to take a look at our revenue field for organizations. So historically, we've had revenues that are publicly available on the web. So a company publishes their revenue or financial filing, you know, they're public. Recently, we've added to this field to use machine learning to give an estimated revenue on over 99% of hundreds of millions of orgs in the KG. Uh, but what I wanted to show you here today is how to distinguish between the companies for which we have estimated revenue versus those we have a reported revenue number for. So uh, one way to do this is by using the has selector and see if an organization has yearly revenues. Uh, yearly revenues is a reported value uh, instead of the field revenue.value, which is either our estimated revenue or the most reported revenue. Uh, so we can see there's these are obviously uh, very large public companies or companies that, that in all likelihood for some reason have to report their earnings or choose to report their earnings. Uh, about a million of them, which makes sense for publicly listed companies uh, around the world. Um, and if we wanted to, to see the inverse here, uh, just to show where data lies on the knowledge graph, we could say, show us all, all organizations that don't have yearly revenues. Uh, okay, most of these probably have um, estimated revenues, but we have about 250 million results that have an estimated revenue, a vast majority of them, or uh, you know, they're, they're, they're cities, they are uh, governmental organizations. Uh, and and so forth. Um, and so now a second way to check this, I'm going to revert back to our first query here. And I'm going to go select a large public company. And what we can do, uh, what we can do here is, uh, let's head back to Microsoft again. And um, you know, if you've, if you've never explored the KG, this is the visual representation of our org page. Um, but there are many, many fields in JSON or extended JSON. I'm going to go check one out. Um, and what I'm going to look for here is I am just going to uh, control F and uh, then I'm going to type uh, revenue. And what I'm looking for here uh, essentially are explicit origins. So uh, where, in particular, uh, for US-based entities, we'll often have facts from sec.gov. And explicit origins are essentially uh, where we extracted this fact from the web. So this is not a computed value of revenue. Rather, this is a reported value through the SEC. And so that's a, that's a second way to, to programmatically um, determine whether you're dealing with our new estimated revenue field or uh, reported revenue directly from the organization. So uh, onto our fourth query, I want to showcase a new query type, and that's what we call our lookalike query. So this is a pretty simple query. Um, basically, we say, you know, something like return all entities of the type organization that are similar to uh, an organization whose name is Walmart in this case. 
And this is another machine learning computed field. Every organization of the 250 million plus in the KG has a similar two score to every other organization, um, looking at a wide variety of metrics. Uh, an alternative syntax here is that you can pass in multiple organizations you want your results to be similar to. And you can pass them in an ID form. Um, ID here is the final bit of a diffbot URI. So if you look in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, um, after app.diffbot.com forward slash entity, um, everything after that would be uh, the ID. And so in this case, this is Walmart's and Target's ID. Let's check out organizations that are similar to both. And that's it, a pretty simple query, but we see a lot of market intelligence use cases of news monitoring use cases sort of in this exploratory stage of, uh, of uh, I, I know what one competitor looks like now, show me other potential competitors that fit the same mold or so forth. Simple query, but a lot of contextual information uh, embedded there. So... For our next query, uh, many customers who are successful using the KG use facet queries to explore where data coverage is strongest. Uh, so I want to show you some nuances of the facet query. Uh, let's say we're looking at founders who have raised funding rounds, and we want to separate these funding rounds amounts into bins of our choosing. Um, this query, you know, is maybe a little bit contrived. I, I added the the ranges of zero to ten thousand and ten thousand to one hundred thousand, sort of unlikely funding round amounts. Um, but to get this started, basically, what we're doing here is we're saying uh, return people that have employments of the title founder. We want this to currently be true, so current founders, and we want for their employer to have a uh, total investment value. Then we're jumping into our facet query here, and we're faceting by employments, employer, total investment amount, value. Um, and we're passing into these brackets here the two ranges we want to look at. Um, if we if we remove these two ranges, it would just show all, all investment value for all of these employments. But in this case, um, it pulls out, you know, the, the individuals who have somewhere reported online that they raised zero to $10,000, sort of an unlikely range to report online, and then 10,000 to 100,000. So a more, a more common, uh, you know, seed funding round amount. Um, jumping to sort of a related example, we have a little bit of syntactic sugar around faceting by date and toggling, you know, what sort of date you want returned. So you can notice this is a similar format here where we're faceting by a field um, and then into brackets beforehand, we pass uh, the size of the bin we want. In this case, week, we could put day or month as well. And what we're looking at, at here is how many articles by week were tagged Apple uh, within the knowledge graph. And uh, the results of uh, this sort of query look like so. Um, you can also add to this, and we can say we only want negative or positive articles. You can get sort of a, a feed of both velocity and what uh, is the character of articles referencing a given topic. Um, so, you know, next up for our seventh query, I wanted to show you a query we've recently made into some data visualizations, and that is market intel related. And this is how you can look at what industries a set of companies are investing in over time. So this query looks uh, sort of like the following. And uh, so this is looking for, uh, you know, a list of organizations um, that have investments where the investors are named Facebook, Alphabet, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, and Netflix. And uh, notice this is another nested query. So we are also, we are talking about investments now. Uh, the date occurs uh, in the year 2019, after the first day of 2019, and let's say before the first day of 2020, we're then faceting by industry. So what are the industries of organizations that were invested in by these, these entities within a given time frame? And so this gives us a nice view of a given year, these date parameters. And you could easily, you know, work through programmatically where you 
replace these uh, over a period of time. You know, it's sort of unsurprising in a given year that AI and software companies, computer hardware would be close to the top. But um, yeah, great, great level of granularity when looking at uh, where are these large firms investing. Um, so next up, I want to share a useful market intel query that allows you to see hiring trends in an organization. Uh, so who was hired at what time? Who was fired? What were their roles? And so forth. Um, so I'm going to paste this query in. And essentially what we have here uh, is we have, we want to return people whose employments, another nested query, uh, have an employer named Facebook from uh, the first day of 2020 to the first day of 2021 and not afterwards. Uh, so people that worked uh, at Facebook last year and no longer work there, we then want to uh, facet by their categories. So we showed categories earlier. Are they management? Are they software developers? Uh, what's their general category? So we see that Facebook has fired almost 100 managers, uh, maybe even more once you disambiguate here. Um, uh, slightly less engineering. And, and this is a sort of data, data point that becomes more interesting with scale, like how many managers in total are there at Facebook, how many engineers, uh, and so forth. Um, and, and, you know, this is an interesting inference that our AI is able to pull from online CVs and can be piped directly into dashboards. We've seen this create some really unique feeds on competitors where they're seeing gro growth uh, or lack of growth in headcount as well as uh, job function and level attached to this. So uh, next up for our ninth query, I wanna show you a distinction that many getting started with the knowledge graph don't get right away. Um, if you've looked through knowledge graph results for uh, articles, you might've noticed that in the far right-hand result column, there's sentiment for some, uh, some articles. And this is document level sentiment, but we also have entity level sentiment, uh, which is uh, much more rare and a more powerful tool. So uh, what we're looking at here is articles that um, have been tagged with the URI, and this is Apple Inc's URI. Um, so they have, they have this tag and the sentiment of that tag, tag level sentiment is less than zero. And you can sort of see that is the case because not all of these uh, articles have uh, document level sentiment. So rather we're looking at um, at articles that have been tagged with Apple Inc. And wherever Apple Inc. is in the article um, is a negative mention. So for our final query here, I want to show you a little bit of a workaround here. Um, let's say you're after data on a more niche offering, something that's not quite an entire industry, even amongst our very long list of industries we can filter by. Uh, maybe it's a single offering. So there's an interesting field called description. And this is extracted from the public web or uh, inferred. And it's basically a one or two line summary that contains uh, a description of what an organization offers. So just to show this in action, um, I've searched for all organizations that contain the words hang gliding in their description. Uh, this isn't large enough quite to be a full industry in our uh, knowledge graph, um, but we can see that we get into the category immediately of uh, different, different kites, maybe airports that offer uh, hang gliding services, um, outdoor centers, you know, uh, gliding clubs, so basically a little cottage industry here. We have 771 results, so so pretty good for organizations that relate to this very niche offering. Um, description can be used for a lot of things, and it's it's not it's organizations are not uh, neatly pegged into every single category you would think every single time. So description can be a great workaround here. Um, yeah, so that wraps up our. 10 new market intelligence queries in DiffBot's Knowledge Graph. I hope you enjoyed and feel free to reach out if you'd like further information or you want to work through examples together. Thanks so much.